Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about hemolytic uremic syndrome. And if you want to follow along with written notes on this topic, you can follow along at ZeroToFinals.com slash HUS or in the renal section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, also known as HUS, occurs when there's thrombosis in the small blood vessels throughout the body. Remember, thrombosis is blood clots. So this is where little blood clots occur within the small blood vessels throughout the body. This is usually triggered by a bacterial toxin called the Shiga toxin. And it leads to a classic triad of hemolytic anemia. So this is anemia caused by the breakdown of red blood cells acute kidney injury, and a low platelet count, which is described as thrombocytopenia. The most common cause is a toxin produced by the bacteria E. coli 0157, which is called the Shiga toxin. A different bug called Shigella also produces this same toxin. And the use of antibiotics and anti-motility medications like loperamide to treat gastroenteritis caused by these particular pathogens increases the risk of developing hemolytic uremic syndrome. So this is the main reason when somebody has gastroenteritis that we wouldn't routinely use antibiotics or loperamide to treat the condition. So how does it present? Well, E. coli 0157 causes a brief gastroenteritis, often with bloody diarrhea. And about five days after the diarrhea, the person will start displaying symptoms of hemolytic uremic syndrome. And these are things like reduced urine output because of the acute kidney injury, hematuria or dark brown urine, abdominal pain, lethargy and irritability, confusion, hypertension or high blood pressure and also bruising. So how do we manage the condition? Well, hemolytic uremic syndrome is a medical emergency and it's got a very high mortality rate of about 10%. The condition is self-limiting, so treatment is with supportive management and this is with antihypertensive medication to keep the blood pressure in the normal range, blood transfusions if required to treat the hemolytic anemia, and hemodialysis if there's a severe acute kidney injury. Around 70 to 80% of patients who develop hemolytic uremic syndrome will make a complete recovery. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel. There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.